Hello everyone, this is Antonio speaking. Today I have the pleasure to talk with Cyril, one of my greatest friends. We have a connection, I don't know from where, but we do. <laughs> and it was very hard for me to get her to, to talk with me to you, and today I got her. So Cyril, thank you very much for being with us and sharing some of the information you have because you're a well of information so I, I know it's all going to come out. Thank you. Oh, well, it's a pleasure anytime as you know. I'm sorry that my schedule has been a little hectic but I'm happy to do it. Oh that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good and thank you, thank you. Um, you were saying, you were talking about uh, how you know negative people sometimes walk life before we begin shooting the video and uh, you know I'd like to share that with people you know just the fact of getting up in the morning uh, no matter how you get up in the morning and you know go to the bathroom and every bathroom has a mirror just take 30 seconds and look at yourself in the mirror and value what you see the person you see in the mirror and just say a couple of words like you are so beautiful you and I I'm going to have a beautiful day today. Um, well, I love that, Antonio. I think one of the things that we were talking about before was you asked, asked me how I'm feeling or how are you, and I said, great. And you said, it was so nice. Yes. Somebody saying that they were great. And as I said, sometimes there's days where you don't necessarily feel great, but it's about faking it till you feel it. Exactly. And, um, Getting up and creating your day, just taking those 30 seconds, as you said, or two minutes, or whatever it is, to really connect with yourself first thing in the morning and look at your day's events and what you have going on. And even if you have some that are a bit challenging, just to see how you want to pass through those and see them in the most optimal light. You know, one of the things, and I am so guilty of this, that my husband does have to remind me is that because we're surrounded by electronics right now, a lot of people get in the habit, first thing in the morning, they reach for their phone or they reach for their iPad to check their emails. And we're trying to make it a rule in our bedroom that we reconnect with each other first and ourselves before we delve into everything in the outside world. And I have to tell you, there's days where it's not always easy, especially when you're waiting for an email or you're anxious to see what the media is saying about a particular event. But I really think that if we can get into the habit of putting ourselves first for those 30 seconds or two minutes in the morning when we start our day, things just seem to go more smoothly. When I forget or I'm hurried or I'm, you know, not kind of conscious of what I'm doing, it doesn't seem to play out in the same way or with the same level of ease so you know it's something that I, i'm not perfect about but i'm trying more and more to do it because the results are there when you do you know put yourself first and have that brief connection and see how your day plays out in kind of this ideal way hmm. well <clears throat> everything is a force of habit and i know that you see we are kind of controlled by the subconscious mind this program, okay, the paradigms we call it. And if you give yourself a chance, at least seven days, you do that. Instead of turning on your phone or going to watch the news or whatever about the matrix, go to the bathroom or you, even in your room, look at the mirror and look at yourself and acknowledge yourself. Just those 30 seconds, you do, you do that for seven days, the ideal would be 14 days. What do you think you're doing? You're installing that in your subconscious mind. So it kind of becomes automatic. And because as you say, if you begin the day acknowledging yourself and the importance of the self, chances are you don't get distracted by all this mechanism that is there to to get you off, to get you defocused, to get you well, the way we know it. Eh? And this is like, uh, before we begin the video, I asked you, how, how are you? And you said, I'm great. And I said to you, it's nice to hear that, because I always say that, hey, I'm great. But that's not what I hear when I ask people that question. 
And it's sad because you're telling yourself, well, you know, it could be bad. Well, I've been better. Oh, the weather, this and that. So what, look at your programming. And in your day, because you see, it's all installed in your aura without you even knowing. And that just vibrates, right? Like frequencies. And that creates, creates things as, uh, as banal as you needed a parking and you can't find the parking. That's right. Or you need to talk to John and somehow John is not available. What the heck is wrong? Is you. And this is so difficult for people to accept that it's always about us. And it begins yeah. with this 30 seconds. Acknowledge that person. You, you know what, Cyril, and you know this to be true. The majority of people I talk to, they say they have a hard time looking at themselves in the mirror. And making eye contact with yourself. Yeah, exactly, eye contact. That's, that's sad. Mm -hmm. My goodness. But anyway. Well, uh, you know, one of the things that, as you know, Antonio, I'm, I'm on planes a lot. I'm in airports a lot. And travel in general is not getting any easier. No. And I find on those days, and this is where I see it play out in my life, because at airports and flying internationally, when you're going through particular airports, especially with everything that's going on in the world right now, there can be so many things that block you and stop you. There can be flights delayed, there can be you're stuck in security, they decided to take your bag, you're looking at your watch, you've got 15 minutes to make your flight. And it's in those particularly intense times where I find that when I'm sitting on a plane, if I know my plane is late, for example, and I have to make a connection, if I can visualize, okay, I'm getting off this plane with Grace and E, I'm heading to um, the next gate, I'm going through security, I'm going to go through easily and get there just in time to make my flight and sit down and not be carried. When I talk to myself like that, the outcome, 99% of the time, is positive. When I'm looking at my watch and freaking out and saying, oh my gosh, will they just hurry up? Will they just go? What's wrong with this guy? Inevitably, what happens are all these blocks. And I think that talking to yourself in this positive way that you're talking, and, and that's just a small example. That's an example in my life, but you can take that to your traveling to work on a train or a subway, or you're in traffic, bumper to bumper traffic, or what have you. Because life appears, and I'll, I'll use that word appears, to be getting more complicated. So we really have to see that we're flowing through the complications with grace and ease. It does somehow, energetically, make our lives flow a lot easier. And consequently, when it flows a lot easier, you're less stressed, you're a happier person, you're happier to be around, your relationships are better, and all of those things. Absolutely. Um... You said that life is getting more complicated. You know... Uh, I said appears. Appears. <laughs> you see, even that, it get, you see, more complicated for who? For those people. See, you were talking about flying in airports and the, my last flight from, uh, from Lisbon to Montreal. Uh, I mean, that's one that my wife will never forget. So we got to the airport and I, I said to myself, well, this is the second last, or was the last, I believe it was the last flight, direct flight to Montreal. So I said to myself, well, uh, the plane is going back practically empty. Anyway, we got to the, to, to the check-in. Now, before I left, and this is very important, before I left, the house where I was staying, I turned back, as I always do, went to the bathroom, closed the door, and I talked to Hubert, as you know. Mm -hmm. And exactly in detail. You see, when I tell people this, especially in talks, I look them, themselves in the eye and say, listen, before I even go any further, I want you to know that Many of the things I'm going to tell you today, that I'm going to share with you today, are not believable. You don't have to tell me. I know. No. So don't, 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 don't tell me. So, I said 
I stated everything I wanted. Uh, as far as not being checked at the, at the customs and have the best seats in the airplane and so on and so forth. Okay, we got to the check-in. The girl on the desk tells us, sorry, you are going to be separate, separated because the plane is full and I don't have side by side. Okay, I know, I remember what I asked, and it never failed. But my wife doesn't think, she doesn't always think the same way. And she starts freaking out, I knew it, and this and that. And she begins, she begins yeah. like a, a real good nine does sometimes. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and I said, S stop, when we get in, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, so we went in, and sure enough, she's sitting back there with a beautiful face, with a nice smile, you know, turning down. <laughs> and I'm a hand on a three seater and two Russians. Very big, and I'm like this. Okay, all right. Now we're gonna do seven hours, seven and a half hours this way. No, we're not. Right. I'm there. I look at the, uh, the flight attendant and I asked him if the plane was full. He said no. no. Okay. And then, you know the aisle of, you know, the, the emer emergency aisle? Yes. The one you have a lot of leg room? Right. There was nobody. Three, three, three. Nobody. And at one point, people stopped coming in, and the plane was half empty. Mm -hmm. So I looked at the guy and I said, could you please keep those, could we move there, could you keep them for us? He said, yes, don't worry, you can move here once we're in the air. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so to make this, a long, uh, to make a long story short, we end up by the window, mm -hmm. with an empty seat in between, with all our books, a lot of leg space. It was wonderful. But you know, for those who are uh, watching us, you see, sometimes, and I have to say this, sometimes our partner really messes with the energy that we set in motion. Mm -hmm. It was not my case because she always trusts me and believes in me. Right. But when you have a partner that does not believe and does not trust and begins to, you know, just roll in that negative energy, uh, boy, then it's like light and dark. I'm not saying you will not win, but you will struggle. Yes. Okay. So, um, Yes. Well, you know, when you're talking about that with partners, I agree with you because, as you know, it's taken my husband a bit to get on board with some of these things, as in the beginning with Manuela, from, you know, what you told me. But I think what's happened over the years is that he has seen that now he no longer questions. <laughs> No. It's going to be fine, and he grumbles a little bit, and then he says, okay, it'll be fine, we'll see. And it, and it is, so there's more, you know, in the beginning, if you, my advice to people that would have a partner that maybe wouldn't be on board with that whole notion of manifesting and positive thinking, etc., one of the things I would tell them is, you know, you're going to take maybe two steps forward from time to time and one step back. But gradually what happens is that they can't deny the evidence of how you are changing, how your life together is changing, and you know how, these, how the universe is basically opening up to greater possibilities. So yes, it's sometimes in the beginning a little challenging, but the more evidence in some ways you present them about how things are working out, it's not long in convincing them that there is a different way. 
Well, absolutely. Absolutely. That is, that is so true. You are absolutely right. But I have to say that um, some people are so stubborn. <laughs> well, that's true. And it's like they, e they enjoy creating that negative outcome so that they can be right. No, I'm saying this because I have a lot of lady clients and you know the, the male figure still today. Yes. It's pathetic, but anyway. So, the, the, it's like, you see, the, the, the feminine energy is much, much more sensitive and fragile. So, it, it tends to give in more and, and, and I do see this. But anyway, the, the message here is, look, if you can have a good time, a good day, with a positive thinking, it's not with a negative thinking you're going to have it. So, look, it costs us nothing, try it and you'll see. Begin the day with a positive mind, okay? And if you're watching the news, I watch the news every day, not to be informed, <laughs> to know what's going on in the matrix. Exactly. But I, I am outside, I'm just watching. It's watching a play. Exactly. So I'm not getting emotionally involved mm -hmm. with what's going on. No. So that, that, that's not a reason to, tur to, to, to turn me off or to, to set me off or whatever, you know. So anyway, ah, try it. Seven yeah. days, 14 days, give yourself a chance and you'll see. And then you'll smile more. <laughs> and everything will be much better. Absolutely. Okay. So